everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the second video in the series about the recent developments in the West Virginia water crisis. So as I mentioned in my previous video, on June 12th, just two days ago, Freedom Industries spilled more chemicals into the Elk River, which goes into West Virginia American Water's intake valves and supplies water to 300,000 people in West Virginia. Now this wasn't pure chemicals like the last spill on January 9th. This was um, water from a stormwater containment trench that overflowed. Now, we have learned that there was another spill yesterday at Freedom Industries from the exact same containment trench that overflowed on Thursday. So today, my concern is not to go over all of the details of that spill with you because Ken Ward of the Charleston Gazette did a fantastic job in his article, which I will link in the bottom bar below in this video as well as in my coordinating blog post. Today I would like to talk to you about what everyday citizens like you and I can do to make our voices heard on this issue and make sure that these kind of things just don't keep happening. So if you read Ken Ward's article in the Charleston Gazette that he just published on Friday, you'll see that he spoke with the DEP Secretary Randy Huffman. Now Randy Huffman has been dealing with the West Virginia water crisis since the very beginning. Huffman said in a press release yesterday, to have this happen twice in two days is outrageous and unacceptable. Freedom and its environmental consultant should have a system in place to handle heavy rainfall. So my question is, why is it up to Freedom Industries and their consultants to manage safety at this plant. They've already demonstrated to us time and time again that they are not capable. So why does it not then fall upon the DEP or the EPA to take over this plant and start the demolition of this plant despite the bankruptcy case? Now maybe this doesn't fall within their purview, but shouldn't it? Shouldn't we not demand that this take place? The West Virginia water crisis is not over, despite the national media turning away from us, despite the local media even reporting much, much less on all of the ongoing developments, and there have been quite a few, which I will also be posting in my next video and on my blog. So what can we as citizens do? First of all, we can inform ourselves. That means reading the news, watching the news, both local and national. That could also mean searching on Twitter for the WV Water Crisis hashtag to see all of the most pertinent, up-to-date information on this particular topic, because I know sometimes it can be hard to find in the news sites that we look through, so Twitter kind of aggregates all of that for us. The second thing that you can do is share your stories, both your own personal stories and news stories, and I found that in the West Virginia water crisis, the way that most information was spread was through social media like Facebook. Now, from beyond just being informed and sharing information, other things that you can do are take action. And when I say take action, I don't mean that you have to launch some huge campaign. You certainly can, and I hope that there are people who do that. But we all have our own constraints, whether it be time, ability, money, any of those things. So we all have to do our own part in this, whether it be a large part or a small part, because all of those small parts do add up. When you see a planned action on one of these community Facebook pages or elsewhere, go to it. Every single person's presence counts. So when you see a meeting about a legislative session, when you see a town hall meeting about the water crisis, a rally, a protest, a vigil, any of those things, just go to it because the presence of every person draws more attention to the event. Remember the press conference that Governor Tomlin gave when he refused to test water in homes? There was so much outrage both in the public and in the media at that press conference that only two hours later he recanted his statement and said we will do testing. And then he funded that $750,000 WV TAP project, which tested 10 homes in West Virginia for the interaction of the chemicals with the plumbing systems. So clearly that public outrage and that media outrage is what we need to get things done in West Virginia and what we need to get things done about the crisis. 
So one of the next important events that you should all know about and attend is the July 16th meeting of the U.S. Chemical Safety Board. At this meeting, they're going to be presenting, in part, their findings from their investigation into the January 9th chemical spill at Freedom Industries. They will also have time for the public to give their own comments on their report. So this meeting is from 12 to 3 p.m. on July 16th at the Four Points Sheraton in Charleston. Another thing that I encourage you all to do is share your stories on wvwatercrisis.com. It is important that everyone's story is told because that's what makes the story real and that's what makes it relevant to people who don't understand why this affects them, why it's important, and why they should pay attention. So thank you all for watching this video. It was a little bit out of sequence from what I had earlier planned. But as events unfolded over the last 24 hours and another spill happened, I had to change the plan. But I am eventually planning to um, start a small online campaign that I will be explaining more to you all and that you all can participate in in the next few days. So thank you again for watching and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.